welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about the four different types of painted turtles, which are native to the United States. We're gonna tell you guys how you can properly identify them, talk a little bit about their natural history and some of the amazing things that they're capable of. Painted turtles are one of the most abundant turtle species native to the United States, and they're found in a variety of freshwater aquatic habitats. They can be found in something as similar as like a vernal pool, which is a temporary wetland, or they can be found in creeks, ponds, fens, wet meadows, streams, and something as huge as a lake. So they're very adaptive, and they're also very adaptive in captivity. They're popular pets, and they are absolutely stunning. The painted turtles of the United States have a very large range. As I said earlier, they are some of the most abundant turtles in our country. When you take a look at their range map right here, which is where they're found in nature, you see that yellow? That's the famous Eastern painted turtle, which occurs in states like Virginia, and of course, right here in the garden state of New Jersey. Next to them, we find the Midland painted turtle, which can be found in states like New York, Pennsylvania, where the Eastern is also found, and of course, Ohio. Now, if you go all the way out to the west, you're going to see the massive range of the western painted turtle, which is found in states like Iowa, but all the way out to Montana and beyond that. Going all the way down to the south, if you see that little area there in blue, that's our southern painted turtle, which is occurring in states like Tennessee, Alabama, and Arkansas, and others. There's also an overlapping range, which you can find right there in areas like Illinois and Wisconsin. And that's when things can get a little bit difficult because that's when we run into what are called intergrades where two different subspecies will mix. We're not going to get into that in this video. We'll save that for another one because we also see that with box turtles. There's four different types of painted turtles and at one point they were all considered subspecies of each other. However, recent taxonomy suggests that the southern painted turtle is in fact a full species. So they all belong to the genus Chrysemys. But the Eastern, Western, and Midland are Chrysemys picta, each being a subspecies underneath that. The Southern is now Chrysemys dorsalis. Not gonna get carried away with that stuff. You guys can easily Google it. We're just gonna go over the obvious differences between them, which are their physical appearances and a little bit about their size. Painted turtles are capable of something pretty incredible. And that's the fact that they can partly survive freezing and that's because they can control the formation of ice in their bodies it's completely insane the dropping temperatures around the turtles end up cueing the liver to produce special proteins that cause really small ice crystals to form in bodily fluids like the blood plasma or even urine because these ice crystals are so small the damage to the surrounding tissues is minimized. And this is crucial for them when they're in brumation or hibernation. Now, no matter how small ice crystals may be, they can still cause irreparable damage if they're allowed to form inside the turtle's cells. So another crazy adaptation that these amazing turtles have formed is the adaptation that allows painted turtles to protect their cells from ice damage. And that's when ice begins to form outside the cells. The cells in the painted turtles produce sugar compounds, which are called cryoprotectants. Cryoprotectants are something that aid the cells or protect them from damage. And that prevents the water inside the cells from freezing, basically like an antifreeze for a car. The first beauties here we're gonna talk about is the famous Eastern painted turtle. This is the most commonly associated turtle when we think of the painted turtle genus, Chrysemys picta picta. And these are just juveniles. Uh, we believe they're both males. It's still a little bit too uh, young. They're still a little bit too young for us to be sure. But regardless, one of the things I want to point out immediately, if you look at the carapace scoots, these, the top shell here of these turtles, there's something very unique and peculiar about the Eastern painted turtle. Unlike all other North American turtle species, the scoot seams, which are these pale lines here, are actually in straight rows. And again, that's unlike any other North American turtle species, including all the other painted turtles, where these scoot seams are not perfectly aligned going in straight rows across the back like that. It's pretty incredible. 
One of the things you'll notice about them is that gorgeous olive color on the carapace, which sometimes is very dark. They can actually appear as though they're all black. And they have the intricately designed red marginal scoots that go around the carapace. When you look at the plastron of them, they are typically just a pale yellow. They may or may not have a faint black blotch that is usually pretty small right along the midline where you see my fingers touching right there. They have distinct head spots. They have red stripes on the arms, yellow stripes on the head, and partially on the neck, which turn two red stripes. And overall, they grow to be between five and eight inches. So they're not the smallest painted turtle, but they're also not the largest. Next up, we've got the beautiful Western Painted Turtle. This is Chrysemi's Picta bellii, or belly, however you want to pronounce it. And you can see why he gets that scientific name. This is the most conspicuous trait of the Western Painted Turtle, is that incredibly designed plastron. This guy's beautiful, but some of the ones we have in our outdoor ponds blow him out of the water with the intensity of the red and the design of the markings on the plastron. Some of them retain it to adulthood, but usually it's a little bit more vibrant while they're hatchlings. They're also a green colored turtle. Sometimes they're an olive green, sometimes they are bright green, light green, dark green. This guy's kind of right in the middle. And they tend to get those map turtle or slider turtle markings on the carapace there. You can see he's got a little bit of those, you know, red to yellowish orange squigglies on the otherwise green carapace. The design on the marginal scoots when compared to the eastern painted turtle is less vibrant and less noticeable and some of these turtles actually appear as though they're just like almost solid green you can also see that all the striping on his arms neck and head are all yellow they could be very very vibrant almost golden yellow with a tint of orange or they can be paler like they are on this young man right here this is also the largest subspecies of painted turtle um, Reports suggest that females can get up to 10 inches. Now, I've never seen one that big, but I have seen them between eight and a half and nine. This is an adult male. He does not appear to be getting any bigger. Uh, he could though. Right now, he's kind of like your standard size for a painted turtle, but he can get much larger. And these guys, unlike the Eastern painted turtle, they come from the Western portion of this amazing turtle species groups range. Taking a look here now at the Midland painted turtle, Chrysemis picta marginata. I kind of like to think of this type of painted turtle as like a middle ground between the Eastern and the Western because they feature, you know, traits that can kind of be assignable to either one. They are in fact a valid subspecies though, which means they are their own type. You can see the similarities to the Eastern painted turtle with the head there and how they do kind of go to red striping on the side there of the neck. Um, the limbs have like an orange and yellow, a little bit of red going on. Um, one of the things you want to look at is that plastron. Okay, again, this is kind of like a middle ground between the Eastern and the Western. It doesn't have that crazy intense red, all kinds of squiggly markings and designs going on on the plastron like the Western painted does, but it does not have a pale yellow plastron, which is unmarked like many Eastern painted turtles do. When we look at the carapace, Again, middle ground, you can kind of see traits of both. And uh, it, it, they do tend to have more of that design going on on the marginal scoots that the Eastern Painted Turtle does, but then they also feature some of these, again, like faint map turtle markings that we see on the Western Painted. The Midland Painted Turtle can get pretty big. They seem to be more comparable to uh, more towards the western they seem a little bit larger but there are some big easterns and a lot of this comes down to geographic location it's no different with box turtles or with tortoises from Europe some areas the animals are just larger with, than where they are in other spots it doesn't mean that they're a different type though so a midland painted turtle from one area may be very close if not as big in size as a western painted whereas in another area it might be similar to an eastern painted but we're not talking about really huge differences here between these turtles and that, my friends, is the Midland Painted Turtle. This is a nearly full grown adult female, and she's a wonderful representative of that middle ground between the Eastern and Western. Last but not least, we're gonna talk here about the unique Southern Painted Turtle. This is the smallest type of Painted Turtle, and as I mentioned earlier, they are now a full species. So they are no longer Chrysemys picta, they are just Chrysemys dorsalis, full species. 
Um, that's to be debated. Depends on who you cite. We won't go down that road right now. But one of the things you might notice about these guys right off the bat is that distinct dorsal red stripe that goes right down the middle of the carapace. That is one of the most defining characteristics, if not the defining characteristic of the Southern Painted Turtle. It's red, it's very easy to notice, and on an otherwise somewhat unmarked carapace, you can really see it. Now when you look at the marginal scoots here, you can see they're very faint markings when it's compared to the Eastern and Midland Painted Turtle. Um, sometimes the Westerns will even have more than what these guys will have. And when you look at them from the bottom, they will have a pale, basically unmarked plastron, much like the Eastern Painted does, but they're usually even paler. Sometimes the Eastern Painted can have an orangish or really golden yellow plastron, whereas the Southern Painted, like we're looking at right here, will have a very pale yellow uh, plastron. When you look at the bridge, you can see they have more of a blotching going on rather than really like fine tipped markings, almost as if someone took a paintbrush to make them. Painted turtle, right? That's what we see more on the Eastern and Midland. And like I said, these are the smallest, so you can see that they are small. Now this is a female that is getting very close to being able to produce eggs. She is not going to get much larger than this. These are also very round in comparison to the other painted turtles, which are a little bit more elongate. When you look at the head patterns of them, you can see they also have pretty distinct striping going on. One of the similarities to the Eastern painted turtle is that they do get those red stripes on the front limbs and even a little bit on the back. Primarily the neck stripes will stay yellow, whereas as soon as that skin fold hits, you really see the red striping on the Eastern painted. Now I know this is probably getting confusing, none of this is really all that easy, but once you've seen enough of these guys and you work with them in the flesh, it is night and day when you put them up against each other. As always, things are a little bit easier in differentiating adult turtles because their full markings, size, and other traits have really blossomed and come out. So naturally, it's gonna make it a little bit easier for us to see these physical differences in their characteristics. When it comes to the hatchlings, we're in a little bit of luck here with the painted turtles because for the most part, baby painted turtles are mini versions of the adults. We're not dealing with something like an Eastern box turtle where the vast majority of the babies come out just little tiny brown turtles with almost no markings and then they turn into something like Otis. Painted turtles are an amazing, gorgeous species, still abundant both in nature and also very popular in herpetoculture, just like my little leopard gecko friend right here. So I hope you guys learned a little bit in this video on how to tell the differences between them. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon for notification. Casey and I have a lot of awesome videos planned for you guys. So we'll see you in the next one.